going to start recording. So, yeah, so welcome back to those of you who were with us in the last two sessions, and welcome to those of you joining us for the first time. My name is Tony Mays. I'm Cold Education Specialist for Open Schooling, and I'm responsible for the initial output from the Partnership for Open Distance for Flexible Learning in the Pacific. Uh, the partnership is between the Commonwealth of Learning and Packfold Learn, which is hosted by the Center for Flexible Learning at the University of the South Pacific. And our work is supported by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and Trade in New Zealand. Uh, as you know, um, this is the first of several short courses that the partnerships will put together. And we're delighted that our course leader is Dr. Wayne McIntosh, from the OER Foundation, uh, who is also UNESCO Chair for OER. He will be facilitating the session, um, but before I hand over to him, just to remind you, because we are expecting a lot of people, it is best if you uh, pose any questions that you have uh, either in the chat or by using the Q&A uh, button, the uh, icon at the bottom of the screen, or if you do want to make a live question, then just raise your hand so that we know that you have a question. Okay, so I'm going to switch off my video now and hand over to, to Dr. McIntosh to facilitate today's discussion. Over to you, Dr. McIntosh. Dr. Mays, thank you for the warm introduction. It's, it's wonderful to be able to connect again uh, with teachers from the Pacific region. Uh, as, as you know, uh, in my role as UNESCO Chair for OER, I have a passion for open education and sharing knowledge freely. So it's uh, wonderful to be able to connect with uh, teachers across the Pacific region uh, in refining and improving digital skills for sharing OER, uh, which is what this course is really all about. And so what I thought we, I would uh, do today is we are moving uh, into the phases of the course where uh, teachers are now uh, designing and developing uh, OERs, principal teaching resources for inclusion uh, in their lesson plans. As you know, there are three resources uh, which you are invited to develop to include in a final lesson plan. I thought I would uh, share some experiences um, relating to what we are seeing from the submissions uh, coming through so that uh, those of you that are moving forward with the submissions uh, don't make any of the mistakes uh, that others have made. I see that there was uh, a, a, an early question. I might as well just uh, answer it right now at the start. And the, the question comes from Miri, who asked the, the software applications which we have recommended for download and installation in the DS for OERs course. Um, and Miri wanted to know is if they would still be fully functional once the course has been completed, or do they need or, or do participants need to subscribe or pay license fees to continue using the software we have recommended? And in answer to that question, no, uh, there is no need to pay any fees whatsoever or take out any subscriptions for any of the open source applications we have recommended because they are free and open source software tools, uh, which you are free to use. You are free to uh, share them with friends. So if you've installed them on your work machines, you would also be able to install the same applications on your personal computers. Uh, without the need to pay any licensing fees. So the full LibreOffice suite, which we have recommended, uh, Audacity, the audio editing software, and of course, OpenShot, which is a free and open source uh, video editing application, you are free to use and, and keep installed indefinitely on your machines, uh, which is one of the reasons we have recommended the use of free and open source software. Uh, because we don't want any learners to be denied the, uh, the ability to be able to engage in these courses uh, because they might, uh, of the need to purchase software licenses to participate. 
And I think it's actually quite appropriate that we use free and open source software tools um, when uh, developing and sharing OERs. So what I might just do at this stage is uh, commence with a screen share. Uh, here we go here. Uh, start the screen share here. And for some other reason, the screen share is deciding not to work at the moment. Let me just go through that again. Uh, here we go. Okay, that should be coming through for you now. Yep, it's there now. Perfect. Uh, thanks, Tony. Right, so again, uh, this is the, the course website, and uh, I want to begin today's uh, session by having a look at the uh, the first resource which learners are invited to uh, submit, um, that is under uh, this learning challenge here, to develop a teaching resource that includes open images. So if you go through the, uh, the detail of the, uh, the uh, particular learning challenge, uh, it's listed here, the submenu item, uh, to complete the image resource challenge you'll see all the task requirements are listed there. Um, of interest, uh, the vast majority of resources that have been submitted by DS for OER participants, we have not been able to approve for issuing the badge. And I'll explain in a moment the kinds of uh, problems we uh, have been encountering. Uh, many of which are in fact uh, related to breach of copyright uh, issues. So it, uh, every submission that is made by DS for OER participants is in fact checked by myself and or uh, the facilitators who are helping out on the course. And the things that we are looking for is to make sure that as a course on copyright and open licensing, that the copyright provisions have been adhered to. And in many cases, learners have submitted resources, and I suspect unintentionally, that actually do not meet the copyright requirements. Uh, for, uh, and examples of this include uh, not attributing the images that are included in the resource or correctly attributing those images. And so you'll see in this particular task, you're required to upload two openly licensed images as part of the task. And by uploading those two images, there's also a requirement to attribute those resources correctly using the tassel method, which is the, the title, uh, acknowledging the author, providing the hyperlink to the source, as well as stating the copyright license uh, needs uh, to be there. For, uh, observing that we were encountering a number of submissions uh, that weren't meeting the minimum requirements uh, for this uh, resource submission, we added this checklist, which we uh, invite learners to uh, work through before submitting the resource. And here are the four things that you need to check before submitting your resource. Check that you have two images. If you only submit your resource with one image, it doesn't meet the uh, minimum requirements and you will not be awarded a badge. You need to use the correct attribution and there's a link to the course materials uh, here, which explains how uh, these images have to be attributed. You need to check that the uh, licenses of the images, the two images that you're including in your resource are compatible for relicensing the work or licensing the derivative work. Again, there's a link to the course materials which explains how this is done. And finally, and this is in fact, uh, in, in many respects, the most important aspect, as the author or, or the copyright holder of the resource that has been created, you need to include a copyright statement which assigns an open content license to the teaching resource that you've created. If you do not include a copyright statement with an open license, that resource does not qualify as OER 
which means we do not have permissions to share the resource on the website because as the author, you have not applied an open license giving permissions to us in order to share that resource openly. And so in all the cases where a resource has been submitted without an open license for the resource, we have asked the learners to please resubmit so that we have the permissions to share the resource. Once the resource has had an open license applied to it and it is the correct open license, we then make that resource available for all the learners on the Moodle website to see. So that's just by way of example, please check through the checklist before submitting your resources. So what I thought I would also do today is actually have a look at a couple of examples of resources that have been submitted. So if I move this across here, Tony, if you could just confirm that you see the parts of a plant uh, resource that was developed by one of the participants. Yes, I confirm. Thank you. So here's a, a, a great little resource, um, a, a worksheet which is designed for learners uh, to complete uh, or fill out the labels for different parts of a plant. And it's actually quite a useful resource for handing out in the classroom. Um, but there are a couple of challenges with this resource. If you look at the image that has been included here, I can already see at the bottom there, it says sciencefacts.net, which leads me to believe that this is potentially not an open resource or an openly licensed image. And because this is not an openly licensed image, means that the uh, learner who uh, created this resource is in fact in breach of copyright for a number of reasons. They've made an illegal copy of the image. And in fact, you'll see in the attributions here, it says that that uh, image is licensed to science facts and it's all rights reserved. Reproduction in whole or part without permission is prohibited. So the license statement that the learner includes here actually emphasizes the fact that you aren't allowed to make copies of the image. Moreover, you, you aren't allowed to, in, with any copyrighted work, to make a derivative work of that copyrighted work. So this particular resource is in contravention of copyright. Now, the way to fix this is actually quite, uh, is quite easy, because I think this is a great resource that would be of you know, benefit uh, for use in the classroom and for sharing, is to find an alternate image uh, that actually um, is openly licensed. So before we connected today, I did a quick uh, search. I'm just going to take this away now. Um, to see if I could find any uh, images. And I went to the Wikimedia Commons and I found this image. And if we scroll down here, you will see that this is an openly licensed image. It's a Creative Commons attribution share-alike license, which means we are allowed to reuse it. We are allowed to make derivatives of that image. So that participant could substitute the image that was submitted there with this one. And because we have permissions to adapt and modify this image resource, uh, the adaptations that could be made is the labels that are here could be blanked out and then substituted with empty blocks uh, for creating the worksheet. Similarly, uh, the shoot system could be uh, blocked out by uh, editing the image. Uh, and because this is an openly licensed image, um, it could be included in the resource. Of course, then the image would need to be uh, attributed. And so what is required in terms of our TASL acronym, we need to attribute um, the uh, title of the resource. Uh, so the title of the resource here is uh, Lingua Franca Novo, uh, which is the title that uh, this author gave uh, the resource. The author of this resource, you could see it was an own work submitted by this user. So the author would be C.G. Buri. And uh, the license would be a Creative Commons attribution share alike license. You can see the license there. And all the links to, uh, to the license are in fact there. 
so it, it's a relatively simple process to fix that resource um, and when a, a, a submission is made we do provide feedback comments on the resource uh, stating what is wrong with the submission i should point out that the comments on uh, the feedback we provide after submitting a resource and giving you permission to resubmit sometimes aren't that uh, easy to find so i just want to point out where uh, learners can find um the comments uh, we provide if we invite a learner to resubmit the resource so i've actually logged into this website here as a student uh, just a demo student to show you how this works what you need to do is if you get an email saying that you must please resubmit uh, the assignment what you need to do is to log into the course website with your user login on moodle you need to go to your, your grades section for this particular course. So you would go to your grades. I'm just waiting for that to load. And here you will see earlier on, I just uploaded a resource where the facilitator has added a comment. And the comment was, as the author, I must please uh, add a copyright statement and apply an open license. So that is what was required in order to um, fix up the resource, so to speak, and then uh, resubmit it. So that is in terms of uh, where you find the feedback uh, on resources you asked to resubmit. So let's have a look at a couple more examples. I'm just going to randomly okay. sele Sorry, select Wayne, examples. Can, can, yep, sure. can we just pause a moment? Uh, we've got yep. Miri. Miri is wanting to ask a question. She's raised her hand. Yes, please go ahead. Uh, okay, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mary. Good afternoon. Uh, you know, I just uh, just going through the the course, and I I, I come across these uh, software that you have uh, that you have made available uh, within the course, and I'm uh, you know getting feedback from uh, from you in in saying that we can uh, it's available free that we can download and make use of it and we can even share yes. these softwares to our friends and i'm uh, i'm for, uh, forever thankful for that uh, for it's uh, it's a privilege we are blessed that we are able to download this software and we, it's really going to be helpful um, uh, in in teaching especially in secondary schools uh, in uh, compiling of our compilation of our notes of yes. our resources, teaching uh, resources for our students. Uh, and we are, uh, it's very much appreciated from this end from uh, here in Fiji. Thank you. Thank, and, and, and Mary, thank you. Thank you very much for, uh, you know, ac acknowledging the benefits and, and, and thanking us for alerting you to the, the free software which is available for reuse. And we must also thank and uh, acknowledge all the software developers who have worked hard at uh, developing that software and making that software available under an open source software license uh, for, for the benefit of society. And so um, we are just paying that learning forward by alerting uh, teachers on this course that the, the, there is a wide range of free and open source software which you are able to download and use. So I'm very happy that you're finding it useful and that it will be, be beneficial to teachers in Fiji and elsewhere. I, I should also note that as free and open source software, you could share it with your learners. So if any of your learners, particularly in secondary school, are, are looking for software applications uh, to be able to use without cost or, or without risks of trans transgressing any copyright licenses, you would be free to share that software, that, uh, that software with um, your uh, students as well. Uh, they can just then download it on their home machines uh, I am aware that there uh, are in many places, particularly the remote rural locations, that the cost of bandwidth 
uh, is, is, is expensive for, 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 for many people. And what you could do is because this is openly licensed software, you could keep, keep local copies of the software on the school premises, you know, on a flash drive or some storage device, which you could then share locally uh, for downloading and installing for, uh, for all teachers and in fact for uh, all uh, pupils um, who need editing software. So I'm, I'm very pleased uh, that you are you know, putting the free and open source software to good use and uh, that you're finding it uh, beneficial in, in your studies. Um, so thank you for that feedback. Right, are there any other questions at this stage? Not at the moment. Not at the moment, okay, not a problem. Uh, then I can continue with looking at a couple of uh, examples of submissions we've received. Uh, let's alternate and actually show you uh, a resource that actually meets all the conditions. Oh, here we go. So here's a, uh, a resource that has been, uh, it's a worksheet that has been uh, developed to label the different parts of a computer, which I imagine this is a, a possibly computer studies or, or something like that. And here you can see uh, it has met the requirement. There are at least two images that have been included uh, in this resource. Uh, and you'll see here in the worksheet, uh, numbers have been added, uh, which correspond with the different parts. And then learners are expected to uh, complete um, the labels. In this particular example, the solution has been provided, which is great. But more importantly, you'll see that um, the uh, two images have been correctly attributed. So this is one image, the second image, they have both been attributed correctly. It has the title, personal computer, uh, unlabeled, which is the, the uh, title of that image. There's a hyperlink to the author of that resource. And you'll see that this link here of the title of the image actually goes to the direct uh, link in on the website i'm just opening up the website here you'll see if i click on that link that link takes me to the image source not just the uh, a, a website wikimedia commons it actually takes me to the actual image and so we check to see this when you're submitting your resources um that it goes to the actual image you'll see the correct license has been cited here it's a Creative Commons attribution uh, license and it links through to the license. And most importantly, the author in this particular case, and I, I can legally cite the author because the license permits me to do that. I can legally share this resource. This author has decided to release this OER under a Creative Commons attribution non-commercial license and the license has been correctly attributed. So in this particular case, uh, all the minimum requirements have been met for this resource. Uh, and so this uh, participant has earned their digital badge for, for this particular resource. So there we go. Let's go and have a look at another example. Uh, let me see, I'll select this one here. Okay, so oh, let me not do that one just yet because that's the next uh, challenge, uh, parts of the plant. Here we go. Okay, so here is another example. Uh, I, I won't mention the participant's name. We're not here to name and shame any participants. Uh, we're here to learn and uh, apply copyright correctly. So this participant has in fact included two images, uh, which is correct. There, there's a requirement to include two images. There's the second image that has been included uh, with this resource. Um, however, the attributions are not correct. Um, 
even though the, the title of the image uh, has been mentioned, it doesn't actually link anywhere. It isn't a hyperlink going to the source of the image. Um, you'll see what the, uh, this particular learner has done is added uh, a Creative Commons attribution, non-commercial, no derivatives license to this image. However, if I go to the source of that image or uh, the, the actual website where that image comes from, so let me just go here. So here's uh, the website, it's called Reader's Hook. You'll see the images, they are contained here on the website. If I go and I scroll down to the terms of usage here, you can go and read the detail. Or in fact, you can see right here that the copyright of Reader's Hook is all rights reserved. In fact, if there was no license statement, we know that there's, uh, there doesn't have to be a license or a copyright mark for uh, uh, if we want to assert copyright, all works are automatically all rights reserved, even if there isn't a copyright statement, only if there is a clear open license associated with that resource, will it be an openly licensed resource. So what has happened here are a number of breaches of copyright in this particular example. Um, if we go back to the actual resource, an illegal copy has been made of the all rights reserved resource that was found on the, uh, that third party website on two occasions. So in both cases, these are all rights reserved images that have been copied illegally. Um, moreover, the, there's a second breach in copyright here where the learner has added an open license, which is not a valid open license. So uh, I have no idea where this student got the license from, or is just uh, adding a license to think that if you can, uh, the, perhaps the participant thought you can just add a Creative Commons license to make it an open resource. But that is illegal. It's, it's, it's not possible to do that. So again, even though I'm showing you uh, a resource which is in breach of copyright, I'm doing it under the provisions of fair dealing here because I'm actually trying to teach uh, individuals on a course dedicated to teaching people on how to apply copyright correctly. So there's uh, that resource there. Um, here's another one, which uh, even though this doesn't apply to the school level, there are some uh, participants in this course who are working at uh, tertiary education institution libraries. So here's a resource that includes two images. There's a screenshot image here to the right, uh, which is showing a list of references. And if I scroll down, there is another image here of a question mark, uh, which is included in uh, the resource. So uh, this resource um, has included two images, which is a requirement. In the first instance, you'll see that the image has been correctly attributed in the caption here. It uh, ac uh, acknowledges the author, it, it links through to where the image is, and it uh, states that this uh, resource was dedicated to the public domain using the creative CC, what we call the CC0 uh, public domain dedication. There are a couple of activities here that the learner needs to complete and provide their answers. And you'll see here that this resource has been, uh, this derivative work has been uh, uh, licensed under an open content license. This is what we call the copyright statement. The creator was in Skeen. Uh, the derivative work is now released under CC by SA license. It, they've used uh, the correct license, uh, taking a remix compatibility into account. So there's a public domain resource. There's also a CC by SA resource here. So this derivative work needs to be relicensed under the identical license, CC by SA. So the author has correctly relicensed that work under CC by SA. So there's an example of uh, a resource which has uh, met the minimum requirements. And as I stated, if 
if the resource is in breach of copyright, we cannot legally share that resource with others. If it doesn't have an, a copyright statement where the creator, the author, or the copyright holder has actually released this and an open license, we can't share it as OER. So those are very, very important aspects in this course that you need to make sure you abide by before you submit your resource. So let me just leave it there for a moment to see if there are any questions that have uh, cropped up as we were progressing with the discussion. Right, let me look here. Okay, so there is the question about the use of um, Audacity and OpenShot uh, for the later challenges. I'll come back to that in a moment. I believe it comes from Gita. And Gita, congratulations on uh, the badges that you have already attained. It's great to see your progress. Congratulations. I'll come back to that in a moment. I just want to share one last resource uh, just to highlight um, another challenge. You'll see when we move to the next resource that needs to be submitted, which is in fact a vector chart or a diagram remix, uh, this is a, a learning pathway which focuses specifically on vector graphics. Now, vector graphics are uh, computer-generated, uh, you know, graphics made out of uh, lines and uh, can be um, magnified to uh, any size, uh, can be scaled up uh, to any size. Um, here's an example of a vector-based graphic um, that uh, can be scaled. You can see here, if uh, this image is enlarged by making it bigger, it won't uh, uh, pixelate or lose its quality because it's a vector-based graphic that the computer automatically resizes it. If you do that with what we call raster graphics, uh, photographs are examples of raster graphics. If you enlarge them uh, greater than the original resolution or the original size of those image, images, they'll start to pixelate, uh, which tells us that they are not vector graphics. Now, the big advantage of uh, vector-based graphics is, apart from the fact that you can resize them uh, to any size you want, you can actually start edit components of a vector-based graphic. So if you were to go and download this SVG graphic, you could actually edit that graphic by changing the color of the um, text labeling, for example, to another color. You would be able to do that. So that's one of the advantages of using vector graphics is you can edit uh, components uh, of the, the graphic images. So I just wanna show you an example of an, an image remix for a vector-based vector challenge. So the requirement here was to use uh, two or more vector-based graphics in the resource. So here's a resource that uh, somebody has submitted. I believe it's in, uh, this looks like a chemistry lesson. Um, this, these graphics are self-generated uh, graphics. They, these are not vector graphics that have been sourced on the internet and uh, reused on an open license. So in that respect, it doesn't meet the requirements of this resource. Because what we are wanting to see here is your ability to search and find for vector-based graphics and include them in a resource where you've done some modification to those vector-based graphics. Now you'll see in the case of this particular resource, the two images that have been included here are not vector-based graphics. These are photographs, or in other words, raster images. These aren't vector graphics. So this resource has not met the minimum requirements because there are no vector-based graphics in the challenge to use vector-based graphics. So I just wanted to point that out. Although that said, uh, this learner has done a good, uh, good job of actually acknowledging the, um, the resources, right, and attributing the images that were um, submitted. Uh, they've included uh, the, the, the requirement is to briefly state the purpose and any recommendations for using the lesson that's been done. However, this resource that has been submitted is missing the copyright statement by the author, releasing this under an open content license. So the quick fix uh, to improve this resource and make sure it meets the minimum requirements is to include 
two vector-based graphics. Uh, in this particular example, they don't need to replace these images. There's no reason why you can't include raster images. You just need to include two vector-based graphics in, in here. So maybe two little icons, maybe a, 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 a hand holding a pencil, for example, that you could find online uh, to indicate that the learners must um, you know, write something. And perhaps here, uh, with the purpose of the resource, there could be a little icon uh, showing a target or to signify uh, a, a purpose. Uh, would be a quick and easy way to fix this resource to meet the minimum requirements for submission. So that was on vector-based uh, graphics or the challenge to remix a diagram using vector-based graphics. So just getting back to the actual uh, challenge, it's important to read the, uh, the requirements very, very carefully uh, what, uh, in terms of what is required your resource must include at least two SVG or, or vector-based graphics. There needs to be a second page, which provides just a brief description of the purpose and if and a, a recommend, any recommendations in using the resource. All images must be attributed. Um, when you submit, you'll see you'll be also asked to um, include an editable version of the file, not just the PDF version of the document. And the reason for that is uh, for OER to be effective and to be easy to reuse, having the files available in editable file formats uh, is a way of uh, meeting the requirements uh, of an OER resource. Um, it must also be published on an open license. So the author is required to include a copyright statement. So what has happened here, the learner uh, didn't read the uh, instructions clearly, uh, making sure that the resource meets the minimum uh, specifications. And so, it, you know, it's an open question. We are all, uh, the majority of us are teachers and educators in the classroom. How do you address the challenges of learners not reading the instructions uh, when submitting their homework and assignments? Uh, we strongly recommend that uh, all the participants read the instructions. So, that is in terms of the remix resources. Uh, if there aren't any uh, other questions, I'm going to move on to the use of Audacity and OpenShot. So in the, uh, a later challenge in the course under developing a static audiographic remix. So this is a, a challenge which is a multimedia challenge because we are inviting the particip participants to work in different media. Uh, one of the things that is required in the static audiographic challenge is to include a short music introduction uh, in the uh, audio clip that fades in and fades out. And so the purpose of that is really just to uh, develop uh, digital skills in manipulating or editing audio, uh, audio files. And a simple audio file manipulation is to um, have the music fade, uh, fade out and then fade in again at the end of the resource. And so to edit uh, any audio file, you need to use a piece of uh, open source software or we recommend the use of Audacity. Audacity is software that is used for editing audio. And so the task here is uh, using the enabling activities uh, will be to find a, a music file and that is openly licensed that you can actually edit uh, for fading in and fading out. So in the course, on the course website, there is a video, a short video here, which actually explains how to install Audacity. So you can watch that video. It will walk you through the steps of actually installing the software. And um, you then will need to have the ability, let me just go back here, uh, to fade in a music track and fade out a music track. And all the instructions are provided here. So what, what you do is you watch this video 
and it will show you how to import an openly licensed music file that you have found on the internet and it will go through the steps of using audacity uh, to fade in and fade out um, a video clip so if you watch that video carefully you'll see how to do it and once you've downloaded the software you'll be able to experiment with your own version of audacity to be able to do that uh, the other aspect that you're going to need to do in this challenge is because you're going to have to record an audio track uh, over an, an advanced organizer or a graphic image that you're going to incorporate into a video file you also need the ability to be able to record sound now with audacity you can actually record sound as well and here it, it, it shows you there's a short video clip which explains how to record an audio clip with audacity however you would also be able to record audio uh, with your mobile phone and there are any number of um, applications on android as well as uh, ios for recording audio you could record audio using your mobile phone save that audio as an mp3 file and then that mp3 file that you've uh, downloaded from your phone can be imp imported into audacity uh, for editing and inclusion in the static audio graphic the last component of this in order to put together a static image with a voiceover recording with music fading in or fading out and fading uh, in in the uh, the static audio graphic um, uh, challenge you need to use video editing software to be able to achieve that and that's where we uh, recommend the use of um, open shot which is an open source video editing tool uh, to be able to uh, put these bits and pieces together. So basically how this works is you will um, import your uh, static image. You will then separately import the audio file uh, or your voiceover explaining the image that will also be imported into OpenShot. Uh, the music clip for the, at the beginning and the music clip at the end uh, will be included. And then you adjust the timing so that the uh, duration of the image uh, displays uh, for the time, uh, for the full duration of the audio voiceover. Uh, and then finally, you export um, this project uh, as it's a video file for playback. And you'll see in this actual um, audio uh, in, in, in the learning materials, I've actually created an audio graphic to explain how to create it, uh, uh, or, or I've generated an audio graphic to explain how to create audio graphics. So this is actually an audio graphic which uh, provides an overview of the section which you can play. And later on, I actually uh, explain exactly how that um, or, um, that static audio graphic was created. So, Gita, I hope I hope that answers your question. So, look again, op opening the floor. If there are any additional questions, uh, if you like, and you've got an, uh, a microphone connection, please put up your hand. Uh, alternatively, you can ask uh, your questions. Um, via the chat function. I'm not seeing any more questions. I'll wait a couple more minutes. I'm not seeing questions either. I think um, one question I would have, since we're now talking about the challenges, um, is when when we have stopped. This is the last of the face the, of the live time webinars. If someone hasn't managed to complete the activities by a certain point, I mean, is there a point where we're not going to 
be looking at what people upload? What is the cutoff point by which time people must have done all of these activities? Look, um, it's a good question, Tony. Um, realistically, I mean, I'll, I'll continue to look to see uh, resources that are, you know, being submitted, you know, for two to three weeks um, after, after the course. Uh, if we see that resources are still being submitted, uh, I mean, I can have a conversation uh, with colleagues to perhaps we could I, identify some of the leading champions uh, of the course who've successfully uh, comp uh, become OER practitioners uh, to actually help um, in, um, you know, checking the resources to see if they meet minimum requirements. Because ultimately, we are hoping to build skills and capacity among teachers and educators around the Pacific to uh, build communities of practice where we help each other. And so possibly we could find uh, a couple of volunteers from the teaching community who have now mastered the skills of uh, approving these resources uh, to come and join and, and help and um, their, their colleagues and friends in submitting the resources but certainly for you know two weeks to three weeks after the course i you know i will continue um to uh you know check the resources and uh, award the badges but obviously i mean i can't do it indefinitely i have other projects to move on to as well uh, but so you know make sure you submit your resources in the next uh, within two to three weeks after the course is completed you still got another week to go, so earn as many badges as you can, and um, and we'll see if there are um, if there's demand for lots of resources being submitted long after the course has been completed. We'll see if we can establish a community of practice uh, among Pacific educators uh, to so that we can help each other, support each other. Yeah, Tony, does that does that make sense? Yeah, thanks, Wayne, and thank you for for being flexible about deadlines. There was one other question I wanted to ask, um, and that is for resources that have met the requirements and had a digital badge been awarded, those ones we can look at and share. Where do we find? Is there, are they all in one place or do we, do we have to search to find them? No, so, so what you could do, Tony, is uh, I'm on this demo student here, It'll be interesting to see if I have actually earned, if this student has earned any badges. Uh, let me have a look here. Uh, you go to your dashboard. And yeah, you'll see I haven't, unfortunately, this student hasn't uh, earned any badges yet because it was just a demo student. Uh, let me see if I log in as another student. But basically what you would do on Moodle is you just go to your dashboard, any badges uh, that you've earned uh, on this Moodle site will be listed there and associated there. You should, you would all, should also receive an email uh, notification that the badge has been awarded uh, with a link to uh, where the badge is located. Uh, this, I can't recall which students I used for demo purposes in awarding badges and i'm going to blame old age for my fading memory um let's see if the student had any badges yeah here we go so you'll see what I did there is I went to my uh, login link. Okay, you're I, not sharing screen at the moment, so we can't uh, see. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Let me. Okay. I just need to get the. Screen. I need to use the screen sharing. It's not allowing me to screen screen share. Well, that's a bit frustrating. 
Zoom is not allowing me to share my screen anymore. That's interesting. Right, okay, this looks better now. Right, apology for the delay there. That should be coming through now. Yeah, um, now we can see it. Okay. So, so what I've done is I've logged in as, uh, as a student uh, on the course website, uh, and you see there are a couple of courses that this uh, student is uh, engaged with. So let's just go to digital skills, uh, course website you're familiar with. If you go, you just click on your user link, you'll see you can go straight to your profile, right? And if you click on your profile link, here you will see all the badges uh, that uh, this particular demo student uh, has actually earned uh, on the course. So there, the list of the badges, uh, for, you know, different courses that are available. So, and the user can then actually click through to the actual badge and all the details of, you know, the issuers, what the badge was awarded for, when it was awarded uh, for validation purposes are, uh, is, is all there. So that's in terms of um, where to find your badges. Okay, thanks, Wayne. We've got one. We've got one question from Joan. Um, yeah. It's I've put it into the private chat to you. I'm going to have to say goodbye to yourself and our colleagues because I'm leading a Zoom session in another one of my Zoom instances just now, and since I'm the host, nobody can start without me. <laughs> so, so I'll say thank you and goodbye for now. Thank you, Tony. Uh, we'll see you later. Bye bye. So the question that we have from Joan is, I have submitted my two images for OER. I have done that in Moodle, but the question is, have you managed to open and check the submission? So uh, when I joined the session from memory, there weren't any outstanding uh, submissions I needed to check. Uh, Joan, I'm speaking on the correction. I'll need to go back and uh, uh, check again, but my suspicion is, that if you submitted a couple of days ago, the, it, the resource might not have met the minimum requirements. For example, there might've been something missing. And uh, for that reason, we have given you permission to resubmit. And you may have missed that email uh, inviting you to resubmit. Now, what you can do is when you log into Moodle uh, and you join the course, I'm gonna just go to the course website here. What I re recommend you do is check your grades uh, section. Once you've logged in as a student, check your grades uh, section of the course, and you'll see what, you've, what you have uh, uploaded and submitted and what the status is. If we have provided feedback and given you permission to resubmit, you'll see the comments here as to what was uh, not correct with your resource. So log into Moodle, go to your grades area and see if you can see anything there. Uh, if that doesn't deal with your query, uh, please post a, uh, your question or a question again in the general forum for the, uh, the, the course site. So Joan, I hope that uh, answers your question. Or uh, Yes, Joan, I hope that uh, deals with your question. Right. Well, I see we at the top of the hour, and uh, like Tony, I'm I'm also I'm now moving into another meeting, so I'm going to wrap up today's session here. We uh, we will post the recording, so uh, you will be able to revisit any of the tips and guidelines uh, we have suggested. So um, you'll be able to view the video again. 
And uh, at this stage, I, I wish you the best of luck in completing the course. Earn as many badges as you can. I look forward to receiving your teaching resources uh, as, as, as you submit them. And um, best of luck with the course. It's uh, great to see the amazing resources teachers are creating and the, the skills you uh, have uh, are developing and demonstrating through the use of free and open source software tools. So I wish you all the very best and, and thank the Commonwealth of Learning team uh, for moderating the session. And, and until we see each other again, uh, goodbye from me here in New Zealand. Goodbye all.